Can I help you? I don't know. Can you? Are you looking for something? Is there something I should be looking for? <laughs> um. Oh, we have a lot of books, so maybe it depends on what you like. What, uh, what do you like? We have a great, um, section of do it yourself. Do you like to do it yourself? Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, if uh, the mood strikes. How is the mood striking you now? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Vic, DJ Blue, Jimmy Cricket, numerous AKAs, aliases. What you're hearing is the uh, the sounds of my chef, boy, our Negro himself, Isaac Hayes, yeah. cooking, up, cooking it up in the kitchen over there in the ATX. What's Trying going to on, get man? Cracking for the family. You good? Yes, sir. Trying to get it cracking for the family, making sure this connection stay good for other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Need that. Need that. Uh, what you got cooking over there, man? Man, look, some, some. Got some cilantro lime marinated chicken breasts. Oh, man. And the, I'm grilling them up a little bit, getting keep them juicy. I'm going to chop them up, put them on some salad. Oh, you know, man. Some bacon bits, little banana peppers. Oh. You know, just a little something for the night, man. Y'all be hungry all over again, man. I had to, you know, me. I, I I try to cook during the week, but man, I couldn't make it today, man. I was struggling just trying to get home, man. So I had to stop by. I had to stop by this little taco shop. Only authentic, authentic taqueria. I could find on the north side of Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Had me a nice yeah. little smother burrito with the uh with the uh with the with the pork and the you know, has some has some little cilantro and lime on it. You know what I'm saying as well, and you know with hey, the, with the beans and rice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, you know, you know, I'm a green sauce man myself. You know, I just converted. I just recently converted over to the green sauce man. I was like, what, what, where has this been my whole life? You know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah, it, it hit the spot though. That's all I know, man. So, 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 did you marry? How long you marry this chicken that you uh you cooking up right now? Man, I'm not gonna lie to you. Walmart marinated it for me, so it's just been sitting there. What? Uh, <laughs> is it the Tyson day. chicken? <laughs> yeah, about a day and a half. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I need to. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get into the chicken life, man. Especially the dark, uh, the white meat chicken life. You know, I'm more of a, a leg and thigh person myself. So you know, I'm trying to get over to the to the lighter side of chicken. But it's so hard, though, man. It's like if you. I'm still working on my cooking skills with the chicken because it's easy to overcook white meat chicken, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So, so that's that's my issue, and I'm uh, working on that. But man, it's not like you're hooking it up over there. You got the it's the family man, ladies and gentlemen. In case you didn't know, man, the, one of the best dads I know. You know what I'm man, saying? Got the kids. I hear the kids in the background acting up and you know <laughs> making the noises and you know hey, the wifey in the it, background it, and FaceTime. We on FaceTime. Keep it real. We keep yes. It real. You know, most people. No, 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 you can't do that, man. That, that's what makes it genuine. That was that's what makes this real. That's that's life, you know what I'm saying? So you need that. I want that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going for that, you know what I'm saying? But man, it's cool, man. So what you what you how's your week going, man? Man, a real good week, man. Um that's like I said, I'm still getting back into my normal daily routine and everything. 
finally took my Christmas tree down. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, the Christmas yeah. tree. <laughs> You're one of those people. Yeah. You're one of those people. <laughs> you know, is it, is it, is it Cinco de Mayo? Why is there, they got Christmas lights up for Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> I got an excuse, I got an excuse though. The weekend we were supposed to take it down, I was in the hospital getting ready to get my transplant. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you get, you get the pass, you get the pass, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we, we, we was the tourists for that too as kids. We were like, these Christmas lights and stuff, but we'd have a Valentine's Day parties at the school. Why are yeah, Christmas lights? Like, <laughs> the kids confused. <laughs> Just have y'all confused. Bobby Rabbit is here too. <laughs> <laughs> man, but yeah, man, it's been, it's been a pretty busy week, uh, I guess, pop culture wise, man. It's, it's funny. As soon as we, as soon, the next day after we recorded last week's episode, Seems like just 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 everything started popping off. Like the world's wanted to act up after we record. And I just wanted to I had to catch up with you and get your opinion on some of this stuff because it's a little it's a little crazy right now, man. Yeah, it's been a crazy last couple of days. Even like you said last week, the last couple of days have been crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So let's start off with some sports real quick, man. Uh, I mean, it's it's been a dead week sports wise. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's no football right now. We'll talk about that in a second. I got some topics. I got to get your opinion on real quick about football. Yes, sir. But, uh, you know, pretty quiet. You know, no baseball yet. Pitches, catches don't, re- uh, uh, I guess, reports training for another week or two for some teams. And uh, <laughs> basketball, all-star break, as you know, the game was last Sunday, which is pretty cool. Uh, the game to me was, um, <sighs> how could I say? It was like watching NBA 2K, like watching a computer play. And you set it up and you just have the two computers, two computer teams play. <laughs> and you just watch there. Yeah, like, like rookie mode or something. Yes, yes. They said there was a total of seventy nine dunks, period, in the game. And on at the highest uh, career of his season high right now this season is nineteen dunks a game in a regular season. But there's seventy nine yeah. dunks in the All Star game. Did you catch the All Star game? And I did, and it's funny you talk about those dunks because you know the. Anthony Davis had about 22, 23 dunks himself yes. in that game. Yes, and he ended up with 52 crazy. points, I believe, man. And it, it, was, it was fun, yet crazy, yet petty, and a little messy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you know what I mean yeah. by, by some of the T thing going on on the yeah. side. But uh, he did say, they said that he had, uh, uh, right before the game, he decided he said he won the record, the all-star record for, um, for points. So, you know, it was kind of like purposely set up that way for them to set him up a score like that. And I, didn't, I didn't know that. I got it now. Make it make sense. Yeah. Make sense. Get his little shine on and everything. But, uh, like I said, the main, uh, I guess the main topic for that weekend was how Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, how they was going to handle play on the same team, yada, 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 for the, uh, for the Western Conference. What would you think about that, man? You know, man... I, I, I'm still in my thing. I just think KD just needs to go ahead and man up and have that conversation. I know it's middle of the season. I know they're focusing on playoffs and everything, but that's, you know, like last week, that's your boy, man. That's your man. Yeah, so man. at what point do you put him aside? Like, look, bro. At least, at least if that game could put him aside, look, bro. Uh, I just want to get it out, out there. You know what I'm saying? No hard feelings. I apologize. And we'll wrap later. So, you know, have that conversation initially. So that way, when it's time to have it, it's, it's time to have it. Because right now, they're just sticking in the mud right now. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I think. And my thing about it is, and we talked about this last week, like you were saying, but the main thing wasn't about what he did, but it was more about how he handled it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm guilty of this mm-hmm. myself. I guess we got to forget, man. We tend to forget. We, we, we Compared to these young cats out here, man, we're a little, we little seasoned. We're a little matured now, so we can yeah. see things from, our, from this side. But, uh, you know, as a kid, you know, the, the, you know, egos play a huge test, you know, when you're in a younger age. And I think it's about ego. I think he knew he messed up. KD, I'm speaking of, he kind of mm-hmm. didn't handle it the best way. And his ego, or I don't know if he doesn't want to admit he was wrong or show that he was wrong or admit that he was wrong, um, is what is how his attitude is going. Because they even talked, the press even addressed him, asked him um, how he felt and you know, does he hope, you know, what, what do you think is going through what's Westbrook's mind? And he has a very nonchalant, uh, copacetic, uh, outgoing, or what that, that's what he's, what he's trying to portray. Like, he's mm-hmm. like, he does his thing, I'll do my thing. 
And same thing with Russell Westbrook himself. Uh, you know, he's... Fashion Week? <laughs> all he was, that's all he was doing was avoiding and ignoring the question, talking about Fashion Week. And to the to, to degree, he's kind of right, too, because I have no patience, man. You're not going to ask me the same thing over and over about, like, some pettiness mm-hmm. going on between, you know, me and a cohort or a friend or whatever you want to call it. But, uh... Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny, man. I thought it was kind of funny, but they did get they did have one connect in the game. They had one alley oop to each other. And oop, that yeah. oop, man. And it, I was telling because I was watching it with Joy, and like I was saying, she was trying to be funny talking about, oh, that was just a muscle reflex. He didn't know he was throwing it to Russell Westbrook. He was just <laughs> <laughs> he's just so he played with him so long. It was just a second. It was second nature. He didn't want to throw it to him. It was just it was just you know, second nature, and uh, <laughs> it kind of looked like that because it was so nonchalant. It was a no look pass. And so I was like, maybe he didn't know, uh, you know, he was just throwing it up there because he's, you know, it was instinct. That's, that's natural basketball. <laughs> yeah. and IQ. But uh, it seemed like overall, like it, it is kind of like water under the bridge. I mean, they're not best of friends, but they're not, you know, they're not enemies either because you know they showed them on the sidelines, yeah. on the court or whatever. They was, you know, throw a little, you know, funny. You know, everybody's being funny with each other and on the team and everybody. So I think it's 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 pretty much done. It's just the only oh, way oh. they they're gonna instigate is if the media keeps. Egging it on, which hopefully they won't. Yeah, yeah I hope so. It's it it yeah it's it's gotten to its limit. You know, you can only stretch something so much before it split. I think it's gotten to its limit right now, where like you said, as long as they stop media, stop feeding into an instigate, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully we can see. We'll see what happens in the playoffs, man. I think they play they play one more time in uh, in Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken, for the playoffs. But we'll see that. Right now. Um, they're both in playoff contention. Well, we all know, already know Golden State is in, Golden, uh, is in playoff contention, but OKC is too, and they're jockeying for that sixth through eighth spot um, right now. So it's almost inevitable they're going to meet each other again. So we'll see how that goes. Let me, let me ask you this. If yeah. Westbrook takes them to the playoffs, I mean, what, what what can anybody say after that? What can Durant say? You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, I should have stayed or something. You know, because think about it. Hey, Oklahoma. Hey, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to jump into it, but I'm sure you're talking about it later. But I just thought about it. Oklahoma made a trade today. Did you see that? I I missed that actually. Let me let me know what's going on with that. I missed. I know yeah, they got they, they got a couple of they got a couple of players from um Chicago today. I just thought about that. So I mean, they got them. I mean, he didn't get nobody high profile. Yeah. But Westbrook got them two solid role players, and I mean, he actually got one that can start at the four. Um. Mm-hmm. What's the dude's name? I just forgot. He had a brain fart. You know, number 22, the post player. God dang it. I just lost his name. For Chicago. Uh, uh, um, uh, Black dude, all headed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, I, oh, I used to get him confused with Boozer. Not, 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 not Carl. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, exactly. uh, yeah. I know you're talking about. Hey, it'll people, come it'll come people on live are going to be yelling right now, asking, like, <laughs> it's they so and so, They basketball. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know, but OKC, they've always had. Uh, they, when you had KD and Russ more of the talent, they always had the scrappy players who are gonna do the work, who are gonna do do the heavy lifting. You know what I'm saying? And now what you saying now? I'm gonna do my research and see. But yeah, now you got me excited about that because um, um, that OKC has never been scared to work. You know what I'm saying? Play in the paint, uh, get yeah. the rebounds and everything with um, with uh, with their with their big man. So. And Victor Oladipo, I'm still waiting on him to show up a little bit too, man. That dude, hey, I used hey, to I watch him. Home Depot, man. That Home Depot. Depot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, say that last name. I call Home Depot. Yeah, man. I watched him in Orlando, and he could really, he can really be a uh, more like the ringmaster and set him up and and be and be a true point guard for Russ. Because there were times last year where they would have Russ run that point, and you know, and, and Russ Russ is more of a slasher, man. I, I hate. I, I I will never compare anybody. To the great one, MJ himself, twenty three, but he is the closest one I could find who I could compare it to as hey, being the scrappiest. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. He always plays angry. He always looks angry. He got that old school two guard scoring mentality, which is what I love about him. You know, oh. so 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 that was the thing about them with him and KD last year was, and this is all this is all that ain't no new information. Everybody knew this was. Can they share the ball like that and get along with him? But, but Russ now now you're seeing how Russ is by himself, almost like him going solo. 
you know, but like the new edition yeah. movie. You see him by himself, and you can see how he can work, man. And it's it's crazy, man. And people tend to forget. He it was on the one team. It was him, KD, James Harden. That's what I was about to say. Serge Ibaka, <laughs> Cephalosha. I was about to say, how can you say it too? He, you know, him and Durant it wasn't a ball for a rim when he had literally five all stars on one team. Yes. Didn't have to, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, wow, like that KD argument for that? No, 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 no. The talent was there, no, no doubt. It was a little no. bit maybe about maturing or whatever, because you got to remember they had to go through San Antonio one year, they had to go through <laughs> Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes, and you gotta remember, Miami was portable back then with three, with the three, you know, Wade, Bosch, and, and Bron. So losing to them was no, you know, wouldn't no, you know, it was, it, that was a yeah, yeah. It, wasn't, right it wasn't a knock on your yeah. armor, but it was just one of those y'all got five yeah. stars. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm real yeah. excited about this year's playoffs just to see how that works out because the West is, I mean, I, like there's no, I don't, I, I'd be very, very shocked if. If it's not uh, Golden State coming out the West, but it should be at least entertaining to watch, you know, yeah. on that side as far as Golden State and uh, OKC. But let's talk about what you came to me and hit me up about when it came to right after the game, because apparently, you know, uh, there was little uh, sneaking whispering back and mm-hmm. forth going on during the All Star game, and I'm over here putting, you know, finishing up, wrapping up last week's podcast and. Posting it and then I get a da 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 da, and uh, guess who's in uh, who's in uh, New Orleans now? It's your it's your boy Boogie, Boogie Cousins. Yo yo yo, tell me what you think about that man. First of all, tell me, let them know how he found out he got traded. Just just for people who don't know. Oh, the, yeah, the crazy thing about it, this man just got done playing in an All Star game. He and you know having a good time. He's going to his post game interview and as he sits down. You can hear the main reporter. He's like, okay, okay, you know, only questions about the All-Star game today, right right now. And Boogie looks, he's like, what else would there be questions about? Like, you know, he's unaware, oblivious to what's going on. So then you see, I guess, his agent or somebody come in his ear. And apparently they're whispering to him, hey, you just got traded. <laughs> and he's like, where? Like, what? Where? What's going on? He's like, you just got traded here to N.O., man. So basically, you know, you're going to stand here. And Boogie, what does he say? Really? 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 Cool. Cool. It's cool. Whatever. cool. Like, he's like, cool. It's whatever. And then the next two sentences out of his mouth, bro. Yeah, man. You know, I love it down here in New Orleans. You know, I love New Orleans. I love the people in New Orleans. He's instant. He's smiling big, man. So it's like. He's like, he called him and Anthony Davis? Yes. Wow. It's a throwback. It's a throwback to the to the, to the golden era for me. Oh. You know, oh. they're saying that they ain't seen a formidable t- tag team like this then since uh, the Twin Towers of the Houston hey, Rockets. And then, all, I'm sorry, the, of the San Antonio Spurs and the Houston Rockets with Hakeem Olajuwon yeah. and Ralph Sampson. So you're going to have two big scoring men on the same team, man. So yeah. we, we th- th- this is going to be... This is going to be uh, very interesting. Oh, Taj Gibson. I'm sorry. I'm so uh, late. Gibson. That's who it was. And, and I, in my mind, I was saying Gibson. But I think <laughs> what name goes to Gibson? It's Taj Gibson. Yeah, so and Taj Gibson. like another role player. Like, a, like a, he was number 11. I don't know his name, but nobody probably knows him. But, yeah, they got two players. <laughs> yes. So so that's who uh, 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 OKC got. They got a, uh, Taj Gibson. Oh, and... Uh, 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 not remember, uh, but there's a question about what Cameron Payne, you know, a- aka uh, Russell Westbrook's uh, sidekick, little homie. Yep. Wonder if he's gonna go over there to Chicago. And mind you, this is all going on live right now, so so things can change during after this is uploaded. So uh, yeah. don't hold this to to, to to as a truth yet, because there's a lot still to go on. So, but that's what's going on now. But um, yeah, man. The uh, Boogie Cousins and uh, Anthony Davis and, and O. Uh, what Crazy. you think about that? Crazy. Man, I, I think that's, like you said, man, that's 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 like another combo that you that you reminisce about. Mm-hmm. Tim Duncan and David Robinson, man, because these two are two of the most, not just best players, but most skilled at their position. Yes. You know what I'm 
Oh, skills. Each one of them is needed, which they're not going to do. Can bring the ball up. Each one of them can hit the three point, hit the perimeter, hit the elbow. You know what I'm saying? Mid range game. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, how are you going to stop him? You got one on the post, you got one mid range on the block or on the free throw line waiting on the jump. Like, how do you stop that? Yes. Yes. And, and the biggest, um, I guess, the biggest uh, opportunity, I would say, I don't want to call it down fault. I don't want to call it a fault or a weakness or anything, but the opportunity is going to be the spacing of the ball. That's what yeah. people are worried about. Can they play together? Can they? Are they going to? Is is uh, will Cousins become a black hole with the ball? Almost like almost like Melo in New York. Does the will the ball flow stop with Cousins or or can can and can Davis play off of Cousins? You know, so we'll yeah. see. And like I always say, all people need. I'm you know I'm an old school dude. You know, Isaiah Tom, besides Jordan, Isaiah Thomas. That's my man. All you need is a strong, immensely strong point guard who could act, who they'll actually listen to and respect, and that's uh-huh. what's stopping them. You know what I'm saying? Every 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 strong team has a point guard. You know what I'm saying? That 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 they respect and will listen to. So that's True. all they really need, man. For me, uh, man. You guess uh, guess who guess who uh, just joined in a little while ago while while we uh, talking sports is 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 the. The, 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 the pretty boy named Ricky. Ricky with the cobbler. Nah, pretty, pretty boy Ricky, Ricky Manning. Manning. Nah, What's still going on, boy? I see you all alive. You know? But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Shout out to Ricky. But um, that's that's what's going on in the, in the, in the West right now in the uh, in the NBA. Uh, actually, games just started again tonight, so I'm just looking online and seeing who's playing right now. And, you know, we're seeing that uh, New York is playing Cleveland. Cleveland is skunking them right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing Houston playing New Orleans. I don't know if Cousins is playing tonight yet, though. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That. I know he's been practicing with him. He was at the Mercedes, you know, at the stadium today. I saw yeah. him on a picture on um, Snapchat, Instagram. So he's there, but like, I don't know if he's playing. I didn't check that. Yeah, man. As far as the uh, the East, man, it's 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 the same talk. I'm worried about the boy Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. I'm trying to see where he might go, man, because they talked about him going to Boston. And uh, and and I don't know, man. That might be a little formula right there. You get Jimmy at the shooting at the three. Nasty, man. You know, with Isaiah Thomas at the point, man. They might be. They might be able to do something with Cleveland, man. I don't know. Who who would they have to give up though? That's the thing. That but see, here's the thing though. What what they have, which is one thing I love about basketball, which is different from football, is some of the trade clauses, man. They got some lottery picks in their pockets to give away, gotcha. bro. So, you know, if, if, if Chicago wants to play the long game, man, they can eventually just, you know, draft some young guys and, you know, curate them and let them grow and everything like that. But, All right. Makes you know, sense. short game, Makes man, you know, they may, they, may want, they may want somebody, you know. But uh, the boss is looking pretty good right now, too, man. But we're going to have to see, bro. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting finish. Like I said, you know, I really don't pick it up until after football season, after all Star, really. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. Finish, man. I'm ready to see it. I'm man. Hey, and a reminder: give me about, give me about two weeks, and I had that fire stick sent to you. You can watch all these games. Oh, uh, God, I almost forgot, bro, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Oh, I didn't forget. I thought about you today when I updated mine. I was like, yep, I gotta go to the store and get here. So okay. I got you. Give me, give me a couple weeks. Okay, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm in Georgia, so I don't really get the local day-to-day gossip of what's going on in the good old D-town in the state of Texas. But I'm here in Romo. What, what Romo might people looking at Romo? Uh, a couple, a couple teams out there, and yeah, I'm here. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So I mean, do you, have you heard anything um, about him? You know, you you, you got you got the the rumor mill going on. Number one. Chicago, right? You know, you think about it. He's from Illinois, but the University of like Northern Illinois or some Eastern Illinois, one of the two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Chicago looking at him. Okay, I heard, I heard, I, you know, like <laughs> this is like real gossip. I'm here in forty. I'm here in San Francisco. Look, might be looking at him a little bit too. And uh-uh, that's uh-uh. Just the rumor, rumor is he wants to stay in Texas, and he said he wants to go to Houston. Oh, that's the. Hey, this rumor. Yeah, he said he don't want. He said he don't want to leave Texas. He wants to stay in Texas, so he said he want to go to Houston. But you know, they just paid Rockwaller. That's sorry, ass dude. Oh. Yeah, Rockwaller, <laughs> seventeen million a year highway robbery, bro. This he boy, t- he, 
He should have stuck. He should have went to Gonzaga and stayed his basketball player. Because he's stinking <laughs> it up at quarterback, bro. Man, he pulled a plies, ran off on the plug. That's what that's what uh, Osweiler did. Yeah, he took that money's and he ran with that. He's very very subpar, man. I think he he's almost like almost like chicken tartar. The boy's undercooked, <laughs> man. That he came out too early out of uh, from Denver, man. He had he had a good. He should have just stayed there, bro, and and not be. I guess I I'm be I'm being armchair quarterback. Monday morning quarterback, whatever, but maybe I don't know what's going on in the ins and outs of the day to day situation in Denver. But you had Manning in front of you, you got to watch him learn from the greatest. You know, your general manager is a freaking quarterback legend. You know, I mean, like, chill, man. You know, fall back. Yes, you know, Mary. I don't know. That man. should show that the man, that should show right there, like you said, all the. Preston in he had in front of him, that should show the man is garbage. He's yeah. garbage. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and, and he like I said, I'm not I'm not even a Texas fan, it's a Texan fan. As far as I'm concerned, they're the J V team in Texas. Yeah, I said it, fight me. Uh but <laughs> anybody out there but they, listening. They, they argue, but they made the playoffs. But they made the playoffs though. No, and, and that's cause I mean, look, look at their defense. I'm not gonna lie, their defense is lovely. I would kill to have Houston's defense for Dallas. Yeah. You know, but yeah. but uh it's it's a bunch of it's a bunch of young guns. They coming up, and and I like their defense, man. And, and and I've heard talk. I don't know. Maybe this was just a rumor mill again, but I've heard talks of JJ Watt for Tony Romo, man. I don't know. Yeah, I heard. Tra- I man. heard that too. You know what I'm saying? With that, if you think about it. They both got back issues. Yeah, and that's what they're looking at. They're trying to see when he returns if he's healthy. I mean, you got to have to draft. You can draft another DE. You got a solid defense without him. You see, you were number one in total defense. Yes. In the league without him, so I mean, it's kind of like. Hey, go, go ahead and make your Papa John's commercial. <laughs> you don't care if pizza man across the grill. <laughs> we'll take our, we'll take our catches on his back. Cause yeah. we, got, we know we got a good line to block for him. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, yes. hey, I mean, hey, hey. That's a straight up for you. <laughs> straight up. You never know, man. We got to see. Let me get to this real quick because uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts myself. And I listen to the Tony Kornheiser show. And they're based out of D.C., man. So this whole Kirk Cousins thing has got me a little, uh, almost a little enamored myself, man. They talking about is he gonna, are they gonna franchise tax him again, or will he go to San Francisco as well? Because Chip Kelly's looking at him as well, and I'm not a Kirk Cousins fan. First of all, I I don't like him. I'm a Cowboys fan, so I actually hate the Redskins, but they're in our division, so you gotta. You gotta, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. You know what I'm saying? Ah. Try to see what they're doing over there in D.C., man. And 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 I'm I'm hearing that he might go to San Francisco. Have you heard anything about that? Or yeah, that was that was the initial. I don't mean the, I don't mean to correct you, but mm-hmm. remember the new coach is uh, your old Atlanta coordinator, Mike Shanahan. Oh yeah, Chip yeah, but Shanahan. I don't know why I said Chip Kelly. They get rid of Chip Kelly. You yeah, remember Shanahan? Shanahan was in. Washington when he got drafted, him and RG three. That's the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the connection. So he he he's looking at him tough. But at the end of the day, if you're Washington, you can't let him go. I'm sorry, because you already let RG three go. I mean, I'm sorry, he wasn't expect he wasn't even end up like you wanted him to. Yeah. But you already let him go. You can't let Cousins after just paying him twenty million last year. <laughs> you can't do that because you finna. Cause, I mean, I know you're gonna have to pay him probably about twenty one, twenty two this year to franchise him. Yeah. But hey, guess what? Tell them, hey, this we gonna franchise you this year. Hey, we gonna get, we gonna guarantee, it, fully guarantee. It. You get all of it. This gonna be a signing bonus. We'll work with your contract because they got, they gotta keep him. Yeah, I don't see anybody hey, in the pipeline for him, and I don't see anybody else comparable or better than him in the open market. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, we just talked about Romo. His back is it is it you know, questionable, and you know, it's it's, it's, it's Romo, go, Romo go to Washington. I will go up there and shoot him myself. <laughs> Or put a hit out on him? <laughs> no, 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 no. I will do it myself. Oh, you will do it yourself. Oh man, yeah, yeah man. No that, you can't, you can't go to the enemy like that. You just, you just, that's nope. just, that's just the no, no, man. And on top of that, that would just be stupid of us. I keep saying us, but that'd be stupid of the, yes. of the Jones family and the Cowboys organization as period. Just to see that happen, man. Last time that happened, Favre went to Brett Favre went from Green Bay to uh, Minnesota, and that wasn't a good look yeah. at all for us. So. Yeah, we'll yeah. see, man. We'll, we'll 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 keep we'll stay up to date with that too. Something popped up before we even got on the uh, the podcast and started talking was it's off it's an off off the field issue, I guess, if you want to say that at all. But Jameis Winston, I don't know if you heard about him today, 
but he was speaking in an elementary school uh, to some young kids, you know, about just, you know, bullying and standing up for yourself and everything. And I want to know if this is, this is, uh, okay, side note, let me, let me say it like this. The, 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 the current presidential administration right now is trying to spin the media <clears throat> as a bunch of instigating fake news, perpetuating, quote unquote, shit starting people right now, basically. And so, you know, a lot of times I'm off of free press. I'm off for that without the news. You know, that's a check. That's a check and checks and balances mechanism. I was specifically designed to watch the government. But um, sometimes I do feel like if it's a slow news week, like it is this week in sports, that you know sometimes you know the the, the media can't kick over some rocks and start some stuff that doesn't even be started. Yeah. But yeah, James Wilson yeah. was giving a speech, and uh, he, I don't have the actual quote, so I'm not gonna quote him. But basically, the gist of it was uh, he asked all the boys to stand up and told them to yell with you know with a big uh, big boy voice. I could do anything. I put my mind to it. And, and and he said, apparently the issue was the way he said it made it seem like men were I guess were inferior, were superior to women because he had them stand up yeah. and yell it out and you know with their voice and and just basically say I could do anything. I put my mind to if I put my mind to it. And apparently the media is having an issue with it, saying that uh, he's promoting, um, uh, I guess, uh, I guess, pigheadedness and sexism and yeah, and all that. just due to his previous, his previous encounters of what happened or what didn't happen at Florida State. So, do you think that they were exaggerating on what he was saying, or are they looking too much into it? What do you think about that, man? Man, let me let me let me just get my disclaimer before, because I know a lot of people gonna say he's a Florida State fan. He's a James. That's why I'm James asking Winston, you, because you are James you know, Winston's top thing. top three Florida State players in my life. That he's probably as much as I love Charlie Ward. I think he's the best quarterback ever for the state. But anyway, <laughs> what this boy is out there inspiring and motivating, and you trying to tell me by him telling kids to yell in a big boy voice that he's number one. Being chauvinistic or sexist, or no, this man is just straight up trying to let these men feel, young men feel that they are what they are. Let me tell you this: I grew up, went to a predominantly white school, yeah. high school and college. May I mean grade school and college? Yeah. The first person who ever made me feel like I was somebody, like real talk, outside of my parents, I ain't gonna lie, was a white lady. <laughs> my third grade teacher, really? Julie Bean. Man, she she used to tell me every day how great I was and how smart I was. She used to tell me I was gonna be the first black president. Hmm. And she used to tell me that she used to tell me to tell my say that to myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I look at that the same as what he's doing the same thing she's doing to them. She did to me. She, she's instilling. He's instilling confidence in people. You know what I'm saying? You speak it into existence. You you you, you talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. do I think he did anything wrong? No. Now, had he said something overtly sexist or racist or chauvinistic, then we can play with this. Yeah. But that's like me and you motivating each other. Am I, am I, am I showing favoritism or am I, am I showing chauvinism because I motivate you? No, because I can motivate my wife, my, my daughter, my niece the same damn way. And see, you know, that's what crazy. I'm thinking, man. That's because I, cause it was, uh, I saw it on the 6 o'clock. Uh, episode running well running a uh, version of uh, Sports Center today, and they were talking about that, and it just seemed like a a non starter to me, and it seemed like that to you know to Michael Smith as yeah. well, and and they were just saying like, man, it's I think we're in a hypersensitive a uh, time right now just yeah. due to the political atmosphere, you know, so everybody's on their on their on their you know, I guess tippy toes about anything right now. You say the wrong thing. Someone's gonna cry xenophobia. Someone's gonna cry anti-Semitism. Someone's gonna cry racist. It's 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 funny. It's I think that people just need to chill. Like stop taking everything yeah. so literal and taking you know, everybody's thing work. You know, Obama, and it's something I just thought of. Are you saying that Obama brought out the race in everybody? You yes. know what I'm saying? Everybody was proud of their race. You. Trump brought out the racist in everybody. Yes. That's and I'm down, and I'm just being real. And that's that's black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. That's the way I feel. 
You know what I'm saying? And see, what I think it is is that people don't even really know the, the true definition of certain terms in racism. The definition, the true definition of racism, the true definition of uh, of prejudice, the true definition of bigotry. Because mm-hmm. we all, we like, I don't care who you are, black, white. Muslim, Jew, Christian, everybody has their own prejudices and everybody has their own big, uh, big, big, mm-hmm. big, bigotry type issues. No matter who you are and no matter, it, you're going to have it. The point of it, how big of it, of a scale it is, how, how small it is, how you, how you act upon it. That's where I'm worried about and that's where I'm concerned because we all have it. So I, I think it's so funny when, <laughs> when uh, somebody, you know, a white person happens to tell me, that's something I say is racist, like towards normal people, like mm. like like just for example the N word. Everybody, you know that that everybody tweets his own about that. But that's gonna be a whole other episode. We're not even gonna get into that. But I just find yeah. it funny mm-hmm. how somebody will tell me I'm being racist, and I'm like, do do you know the definition of racism? That that it it it, it entails of someone having the yes. right or the ability. To, to impede you or, or, or slow you down or reaching your goal, having power over somebody else. I, I mean, just being who I am. This based, is America. Based, on, yeah, based on their race, yes. based on their nationality, whatever. You know, it's funny you said that because it's the way I look at it. White people, Asians, Indians, whatever, like, Hispanics, the, why can they, you know, they gays, I'm sorry. What do they have? Gay Pride Day, Gay Pride Month, whatever. Why can't black people be proud of their their culture, their beings, their selves, themselves, without being called racist? They're the only race that can't be proud of ourselves without being called racist, if you think about it. Because yes. anytime we do it, I'm do it or proud, like my wife's natural, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to the outsider. Oh, she thinks she's better than the eight, and then we already talked about this intra intra racial racism as well. You know, within yes. our race, you know, what I'm saying if you look at her, thinks she's better because she can rock her natural hair and grow. Woo, woo, woo. You know, what I'm saying I'm just like, just because she's embracing her naturalness, her natural beauty, her roots, her whatever you want to call it. How is that racist or whatever? No, she's just doing what she does. What she. <laughs> Number one, has the right to do, has the yes. liberty to do. Now, this is America, number one, but I'm done. That, that, like I said, I just feel like we can't be proud of ourselves without it being offensive. And that that's the biggest thing about racism to me is, oh, if it offends me, it's racism. No. Truth offends people every day. Yes. That doesn't mean it's bad. That, you know, just because it's not PC doesn't mean it's bad. That's and that's what I feel. I feel like because they're offended, they think it's racism. And that's that's where the the uh, the failure of communication comes in. That's where it's at. Because like I said before, what I say, okay, I, this is how I like to explain it to anybody. Um, just because you don't call me a nigger to my face, doesn't mean you're not racist. <laughs> See, that's what that's what uh, a lot of people think. They think that. Overt racism and racism are basically synonymous. No, you calling me a nigger to my face, yes, that's racist. But that's not all it is. That, that's just not the, the typical yeah. example. And people think just because people aren't throwing the word out to each other every day, or I could sit anywhere I want <laughs> in a cafeteria, that racism is over. Mm. Hey, we're in a post-racial society. Mm. It don't exist no more, man. Get over it. <laughs> and, and which is Which is totally not true. Because like you said, once Obama came into office, you know, like, I think it actually um, it exacerbated the racist uh, issue that we have in America because you you t- you want to you want to tell me that racism doesn't exist? Go to any website, go to ESPN, go to CNN.com, and go to the comment section. And before you know it, any article about the smallest thing will turn into a uh, to a racial issue. Out of nowhere, and it's it's like clockwork. Man, you, 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 God, you know, I, I right now I'm not working. Right now I sit at the house, mm-hmm. and you hit a baby girl back there. <laughs> I troll, I troll. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I troll. Yeah, I, I, I see certain posts that I that I see. Oh, this may be controversial. This may, and I read the comments. 
I read the comments, you know what I'm saying? And and, and that's that's how you check the pulse of the world. Number one, yes. people are so safe and bold and nutsy behind the keyboard and the screen that the real thing is going to come out. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I've had two of my friends, people I went to school with, lived in the same neighborhood with, graduated with, like all of this stuff, rode the bus with and everything. Just come out straight racist, straight racist, proud, like hell yeah, I'm racist. Number one, both of them are not even of European descent. Yes, are not white for those who don't understand what I'm saying. Are not white, you know what I'm saying? They're the minority, and as proud as racist as they are, the I, I, only reason I respect them is because number one, they don't have to come talk to me with that bullshit, and number <laughs> two, and number two. That's that's just how they are, and they're quote unquote proud of it. You know, they're not hiding it. Yeah. On the other hand, you got your, and you know, maybe I shouldn't use the words loosely, but this is the reason. This is a problem. You got your non-black friends, your non-brown friends who are dead silent oh, on nice. Facebook when posts when controversy jumps off or when a political post is posted. What do you? speak. They get that silent. And last time I checked, if you're silent, you're just as guilty. You know what I'm saying? That's committing Most the, the crime of the offense. Because you're not, speaking, you're not speaking out against the injustice, nor are you speaking for it. You're just like, oh, it's whatever shit. Let, let, let this man that got shot, this lady, I'm sorry, that got shot downtown in Austin last night because she was mentally unstable. And they say that she she, she went on a small police chase. She got out the car. After she, she wrecked the car, didn't damage anybody, any police property. She wrecked her car into a building, got out of her car. They said she had a knife with somebody she probably a pocket knife, not like a big wheel and a big cleaver or whatever. She, they charge, she charged him and they shot him. Number one, you know what you're dealing with. You know you're dealing with this crazy person. It's like shit that's on the, on, on, the, on the radio today when they were talking about it. You know what you're dealing with. Not, not, why not use non lethal? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got big guns. You got pellet guns. And he said you got a whole utility belt like Batman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the first thing you grab is, oh, let me shoot. And I know we're not in that situation, but as many times as this has happened with black, whites, Hispanic, whatever, we're the one who are always gunned down. Yeah. Other time, this this one man ate, killed the whole man, and then ate this man's face and came out to the police. And he was apprehended with no harm to him. Yes. He was white. You know what I'm saying? This is a woman. Mind you, this is a woman that just got killed yesterday here in Austin. This is a woman. So, it was at least three cops because they said it was three cops. At least three cops. You can't subdue this woman in some way, somehow. Wow. Through all your training. That's crazy. So, this happened I, last night? Last night. Like, not even 24 hours ago. Man, it's, 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 I'm I'm speechless, man, because it's like, yo, what when is this gonna stop? But see, nobody's talking about it, nobody's mm-hmm. saying anything about it, no commentary about it. I had no idea about it. I mean, yeah, why, no, I, I what, they, Georgia, what they want to do is they want to get the local issues out of the way first before they before somebody puts big. They don't want to be oh well. Oh, you know, she didn't have a knife. It was a fingernail file, or you know what I'm saying? She was already hurt from the car accident. When she got out of the car, she was staggering to for help back. They wanted to get all that stuff out of the way before they break it on because they want to look at squeaky clean and say, you know, we're cops, you know, we have split seconds to make a decision when there's a camera around and somebody will be like, oh, she literally walked five minutes before y'all shot her when y'all could have do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. What I look at. that's what I think they're doing. You know, trying to, and I don't want to say cover up, they're trying to mitigate circumstances that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get their ducks in a row before before it actually yeah. gets out there, man. That's crazy, man. It's it's just, it's just and and to us, it may be, it's just another another shooting that just happened. But to her family, man, that, 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 that somebody just lost their life again. Mm-hmm. And, and it could have been avoided, and much could, uh, it could have been handled a lot better. But 
you know, you know how they're gonna spit. So <laughs> we was praying and 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 just teach the next generation to 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 not be a piece of crap. Just treat your your neighbor like you want to be treated, man. That's all it is, and that's literally how you how we can end this. And this ain't no kubaya moment or anything like that. But it just starts with just treating your treating the stranger next to you like like they're like they're a human being, man. That's all it is. You know, no matter if I'm scared of you know what prejudices I may have, just knowing that person's a li living, breathing human in itself, man. That's all you got to do to like to guide you, and, and this world will be a whole lot better, man. But uh, you know, it, 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 that that that's I, I I can't even think about that. I'm gonna do more research on that. I'm gonna read that read up on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I definitely if I and if I find a link to it immediately, I'll send it to you too. But it's just like you said. When are they gonna start happening? When 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 are they gonna do different? Like I understand, like you said, you know, you got some people, you have some pieces of crap out there, but what? what? And I'm not saying it like she's just a weak woman. She was mentally unstable, thing. But what damage could she have done to all three of y'all that one of y'all couldn't have been the peace officer that you are paid to be yeah. and tried to subdue her some way somehow? You know what I'm saying? You know. It's, it's just crazy when you hear it, man, because it's like they don't even try to be peaceful with us. Yeah. They be they are, they are just an officer of the law. They're not a peace officer of the law. They're just an officer. Uh, you and, know and people don't understand the genuine, the genuine, like, I genuinely fear for my life one time. I remember one time you posted on Facebook, and I think one of your friends who wasn't black kind of got offended by it, but, you know, every day I fear for my life. I'm not going to lie. Every I don't day. know if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a home, but... You were saying that you fear for your life, and sometimes that fear stops you from even leaving the house. Sometimes because yeah. you don't know what's gonna happen to you if you get stopped by the cops, if yeah. it's, if you're gonna run to the wrong one. And I remember one guy saying, "Oh, now you're just be over exaggerated. Now you're just being paranoid. Not all cops are like that." Yeah, and you, you could say that. But, but but you know the crazy thing about it is also I'm I'm, I'm gonna just finish real quick. But the one the person you talk about is one of my frat brothers. He's light skinned. He's a cop. Oh really. So yeah, uh, yeah, he's a cop, hmm. and, and, and he's African American. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I have some, t I have plenty, I have detectives who are my mm -hmm. frat brothers, and some of them, they said, hey, it's a blue wall, man. They're not gonna lie, it, it, they're not gonna lie and say it doesn't exist or it's not an issue, but it's like it's them against the world. What are you gonna do? And yeah, and, like I got asked you about the NFL. Have I ever had that conversation with you about the NFL about how? Think about it. I, I have a lot of friends who play the NFL, and you never hear them say anything negative about the NFL once they are out of the NFL. You know, protecting the shield, protecting yeah. the shield. So yeah. exactly, I feel like you know, the cops. I, I mean, it's probably somewhere in their oath or whatever that no, you never bad talk to cops no matter what. You work with the dirty cop, it doesn't matter. He's a good cop. You know what I'm saying? So it's like exactly. I know my friend brother has to get on there and defend the cop, but like, but like, but like I told him, I tell cops when they come to my house. I say, take the badge and the gun away from you, man. You're just like me. Yeah. You, you, you are me. Like, like for instance, short, short story. You know how my neighbor has called the cops on me. No matter what, I can be outside barbecuing, be outside my kid playing. If he feels it's too loud, he calls the cops. The cops come. They've come forty-two times since I've been here. Never wrote in a citation. Never wrote in a citation. Do you hear me? No. And every time they come, I'm like, at what point do you be that peace officer and walk across the street and talk to him? Instead of coming straight to me. 42 you know times? Saying? 42. 42. And what he does is he doesn't call 911. He calls a non-emergency line. So it's like, okay, he's calling again. I don't know what he said. He's like, oh, they're too loud over there. And it could be in the daytime. It could be it could be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Or it could be 9 o'clock at night. No matter what he's calling. Like, if he, if he, if he, if it was too many people out there and if they're too loud, he's calling. And like I said, the cops come out here every time. They come straight to me. Forty two times. They probably only went and talked to him about three times. And one time was because he had his windows open in all in his house and they just told him, Hey, if you don't like the sound, it's not loud, just close your windows. That was one time. You know what I'm saying? And the other time was when me and him have words and I actually told him I was gonna beat his butt, you know what I'm saying? And in and, and, and different terms, but they were just like, hey, you don't say nothing to him. He won't say nothing to you. That's the only time I can remember going over and actually talk to him, bro. Yeah. They always come to me and they'll say, if we hear anything else, we're going to make a tip. Like, and like, I'll, it's like clockwork. You can ask my wife. I'll be like, if 
five minutes later, I'll be back, and they always come, like, they come right back. Oh, he called again, said y'all were still there. I'm like, what? You just left. Like, at what point did you go talk to him? Man, oh man, we got we got to expand on that one. Day. We're gonna, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put a note in that. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to that one day. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, on a lighter note, man, it's it's Thursday. We got about five minutes left, so let's end on a, on, a, on a lighter note, man. It's Thursday, so it's Throwback yeah, Thursday. Man. So I know you had your uh, your slow jams going on today. What was you listening to today? Man, you know, today I was in that 1998, 2002, and that's when you know that's when I was in high school, 98 to 02, man. So. You know, it was a, I don't know if y'all remember that era. It was a lot of Kiki White and Navon. Mm-hmm. You know, RKTP3.com came out. Oh, 112 with Peaches and Cream and oh, Player. Wow. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, what else? What else am I listening to? Of course, I was listening to some Lauren Hill. Got to always have some Lauren on there. Oh, yeah. Got my boy's jacket ahead. Jack, put, you know, that J.E. heartbreak to me. Ooh. And that came out. No. That can't take another heartbreak when that boy's hit every morning. I, I, I listen to that CD every day. Morning before I went to school. Wow, J.E. Harvey. I promise you, I listened to that song. I listened to two songs up there every morning. It was crazy. And then, man, you know what else? Man, I had a little Nas going. Nas with the ether and got the double gun was big and that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, man, we, we were just jamming out 9 8 2002. And I had people send me requests, okay. but I had posted specific. 9-8 to 2002, so after I had made the playlist, people were still sending me requests, and I'm like, mm-mm, I'm really doing 9-8 to 2002, I want to play this song so bad, but it, you know what I'm saying, I had even pressing to I had even little artists in there, like, on the RL from Next, oh, yeah, yeah, solo. Yeah, man, I was jamming the good man off of that CD. Got me a model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I was that, Stuff that people don't really remember, we jam. You know what I'm saying? I would listen to all that stuff because it's like you get so caught up in your favorites that you. Right where you were when the first time you heard it. You know what I'm saying? Like that TP.com album got me and my brother kicked off the track team. I remember this. <laughs> the, night, the night it came out, it came out like on a Tuesday. We got it that week and we jammed the whole. So that Friday night before track meet, we had a party at the hotel. A few of our homegirls were up. We listened to that, that CD all night, like 4.30 in the morning. So we got back to my house, looked in my window. We go to the track meet and there was a rain delay. So we supposed to start at 9 o'clock. They're like, well, no, we're not going to start until 12 o'clock, at least, field events then. Yeah. So we tired. We tired. We didn't get any sleep. We tired as hell. So my sister came to the track meet to watch. Y'all came to watch. She was in town, college. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, it was raining. She was like, man, we go. We got in the car with her and left. Didn't tell her nobody. Didn't tell her to go. We was tired, man. Our mind wasn't working. We was moving for no sleep. That Monday, I never get coach came and asked as far as say, Where's your bag? I never get <laughs> yeah, where's, where's the bag? Yeah, like, well, yeah, well, I'd be like, Yeah, you're done, you're done, you don't leave. Blah, 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 blah. So, needless to say, they had two track meets without us and they sucked. So, they let us back on the team after that, oh, man. Wow. <laughs> I mean, but that, like, like music makes you, if it don't make you remember where you was at when you first heard it, something wrong. Oh, yeah, something wrong. that's funny because I remember. When that when that album came out, tv 2com because that was if I'm not if I'm if I'm correct, that was the weekend of regionals in Texas. I don't know if it was regionals or state in Texas because it was a track team too. With me and my sister was on the team, and uh, that tp 2com was that, that, that was the business man. I'm not gonna lie, man. That, and that was a high to me DJ. That was a high to me DJ. So like all that music from from '98 to 2002, that that was my strike zone right there, man. Like that was. Me starting to do like actual DJ parties and actually do like, uh, like actual pop popular hip hop and not uh-huh. basement underground you know bit backpacking music and scratch mixes and break beats. I was like getting into actual DJ and hip hop parties before I got to UTA. So so yeah that 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 
that time right there, man. Juveniles, 400 degrees. Man, like, dude, like, just all of that. You think about, like, all of that. I remember New Edition, Home Again came out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I remember, like, all that Black Street. Like, yes. all of that was out. And I'm just, they were hot. You know, the whole Cisco, at least the Dragon CD, that CD was oh, hot. Oh, man, that was hot, too. Yeah, the that whole Def CD. Jam click. Def Jam, Def Soul. Yeah. That whole DMX, family. Yeah. E. Black Ground like Records every, every, with every Lee morning. and Timberland. So every morning I woke up, I turned to MTV, MTV Jam. It would be, and I, and I remember, bro, it would be DMX Slipping was always on there. Slipping. Your oh, girl. Can't get up. Your girl, um, <laughs> Khalees, I Hate You So Much Right Now would be oh, on there. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, um, hold on, baby. Um, what else? But it was another one that was always on there. Pink. Uh, there you go. Looking pitiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her very first single, man. Yeah, yeah they like, tried to make her urban when she first came out. And, and Brandy, and Brandy, uh, Have You Ever. Like, oh, those yeah. are the top four on there. Like, I remember, like, that, that, that's, that's what music does, bro. Like, I remember exactly where I was at, exactly what it was. It's great. That, that's, yeah, that's the, that's the telltale sign of good music right there. When, it, when is it, when is it, when is it, when and you start to remember where you were, or what you were doing, or what significant event was going on, mm-hmm. going on around that time, man. It's not yeah. a good song, man. But, hey, man. I, I, remember, I remember real quick, man, Guadalajara, what you did in that one part. Oh, Guadalajara is You did many of them. You did many of them. But one day, you was in that, everybody was in there, and it was raining outside. Oh, that was like one of the last minute parties. Quasi threw together yep. last week. Yep. Shout out yep. to Quasi. Hey, Alpha Phi Alpha. Yeah, shout out. We all fit. Nice. 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 Oh, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have an all Greek episode one day, man. We're going to talk about our stories. I, I, I just remember. I just remember that you was playing white my shoes. Like I said, I've been waiting for you to play white my shoes. And then Kappa came around and said, go my shoes. Like I was crazy and put smoke in my face for black. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that nigga I saw the police broke this thing in. This is a problem. I met a strong ass hand and grabbed me out of the pile. I was like, man. 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 <laughs> man, shout out to the pimpin', the mighty pimpin' who made a cute, man. Y'all was, y'all was some bad boys. Some bad boys. Now we mighty married you, man. I ain't doing no trippin'. A different story for a different day. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so oh, man, I'm gonna let you go, man. I know you can go there cooking for the family and everything, man. Just wanna touch base with you, like I said, we do weekly, man. Uh, tell them where they can catch you out online, man. Man, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I, hey, just like the second good. think I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, all of that. You, you go to my Facebook, I think we'll just open wide open. I always post in the other site, but you can get on my things. I don't know them all right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. But um, but I'm on I'm on every post. I'm on Twitter, D I K, I'm on uh, Instagram, Purple A, 1911. Uh, the only one I can I don't remember is uh, Instagram. But I think that's D I K too, just for space. D I K. So how did you boy, man? How did you boy? Hey, yeah, yeah. Just find him on Facebook and get all the information. Same thing with me, man. Victor Momo on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Jimmy D Cricket, all one word, Jimmy D Cricket six actually, J I M M Y D C R I C K E T six, and that's on Instagram and Twitter as well, man. But, uh, this is another, uh, I guess, weekly recap we doing here. Yeah. So uh, more to come. Uh, this was just, you know, just, just good combo between boys, man. Hope we got some more of these. So until next week. Y'all take it easy. Y'all take care, man. All right, Ike. Y'all have some good eating. All right, man. Tell them. Take it easy. And if it's easy, take it home. Hey. All right. Until next time. See y'all later.